once we got that fire going, we made dinner. Javi made his tent, and he disappeared in the tent. He was just trying to dry up and stay warm, so we helped wherever we could. Yeah, we, we dried we, his clothes out as much as we could, his boots out. So he had dry clothes in the morning. Yeah. And that was that, man. It was crazy. That first day, like, was a detox day for him because the next day and the day after, he was fine. What's up, Javi? What's happening? How you feeling? Fucking dope. I've been getting my ass whooped. From, like, how sick he was one day to how great he would look the next day. Yeah. It's, it it was, was kind of miraculous. <laughs> it was, honestly. It was creepy. <laughs> What's up ladies and gents? It is the first morning of our trek. Uh, it starts sleeting on us early this morning and it keeps sleeting on us here and there. It's pretty windy up here on the crest. Um, we're expecting to hit more snow. Today is we're gonna get past Monte Vista Peak and then we're just gonna walk that crest as far as possible till we start descending on the other side. I just think the breathing is important, so as long as I keep my breathing, I'm fine. But it's been pretty good, pretty well. I've been pretty prepared so far. Yeah, some hype. Hell yeah, man. Can't wait for a camp two already. <laughs> these inclines suck. So far, I'm having a blast, except anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. My bag got soaked because of my camel bag. It bust, busted. My socks got wet. The snow seeped through. But you know, all his clothes got wet. <laughs> his boots got wet. His shirt caught fire. But look at this. This is what's important. See that smile? <laughs> So we came around the crest and uh, we're about to go up Monta Vista Peak and uh, this is where the snow was insanely deep. Like the day the day before the snow was pretty deep but this part the snow was incredibly deep. Waist deep. deep. Yeah, there is a point. But I'm six foot one so it was waist deep. I've never hiked in snow this deep before or backpacked. I've hiked in snow. But man, this is tough. This is so tough. I give everybody props right now, Wes, Kano, Javi, <laughs> like we're kicking ass. But we knew this was the hardest part. It's the last incline to Monta Vista Peak and then we're gonna be at the, pretty much the crest of the mountain. So it'll be little ups and downs, not too bad. You can hurt my knee. When you fell? No, just in general, I've had a bad knee. Mm -hmm. He just got uh, two knee injuries, like his knees, to stop bending. He was walking like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, no joke. And can you imagine going up a hill, like having it like not, but like you can't bend your knees, like it was crazy. So we started kind of slowing down, um, but it was okay, cause Connor just kept, he was tough, he kept going. We're here in the Chiricahua Mountains, way up. Look at our, look at our background. That's our background. And look at our background on this side our background on this side. We are 9,184 feet high and we've gained probably 3,300 somewhere in there. I'll give you, I'll give you facts. They'll be right here. Yeah. Did you see him? Cool. Talk about because I was in front this time so Wesley and Kano were behind yeah, and me I and Javi were up in way up in front so we kept going we're trying to find it and I from the topographical map 
I saw four flat areas before we start the descent down and we needed to camp before we start the descent down. First one we come up to, nothing. It's just covered in snow, no tree coverage, nothing. So I was like, all right, let's keep going. Make it to the, make it to the second one. And you know, when I make it to the second one, something's going on with my gut. I don't know what, but something is really wrenching. So we make it to the second one, even worse, like nowhere to camp, lot deep snow in that area. So we're like, man, so we had two more to go to. So we make it to the third one and uh, there's this little patch of trees and dry ground under it. And I didn't think anything of it because it was so overgrown and it was like real low. Like you couldn't fit anything under there. And uh, I, but I threw my pack off there cause it was a uh, dry and I was just disappointed. I was like, man, we need to find a place. I'm so, I'm like, by this point, my intestines are really starting to hurt. And on top of that, it was starting to get dark. Yes. And Wesley comes up to me and he's like, well, he kind of asked me what's going on. What are, what are we going to do? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like we're going to have to camp here somewhere. And he's all, that area is pretty badass. Actually. I'm like, Thank God, I'm glad you guys like that area because I had no other options. <laughs> yeah, there was no other options. So we got to work right away. We cleared all the, because it was like a, some baby pine trees, probably like 10 years old. They had a lot of dead on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so we cut off all the dead and we used that for firewood. You know, we sawed it off nice so those trees are going to get to spring up later on in the year. Yeah, they're they got nice awesome. and pruned. <laughs> But yeah, so after we did the, gave the trees a little bit of a pruning, we were able to fit our tents in. We were actually able to use some of the trees to build a shelter to, for, to protect our fire. Day three, it's snowing. You know, I've challenged myself, so nothing but thanks for obscure terrain. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you guys. Oh. Thank you guys for being great guests. And as always, the only way forward is through. I've had a little issue last night. Something didn't sit with me. So hopefully, uh, he made, let's just say he made a really solid trips. snow trail to a special tree in the forest. <laughs> yeah. yeah.